Pedigrees are used to determine if a trait is dominant, recessive, sex-linked, or autosomal. All of these types of questions tend to pop up on the AP exam too, so they're important to pay attention to. Here I've got a sample pedigree for you. The circles symbolize females and the squares symbolize males. Any shape that's colored in represents a person that has an attached earlobe. Now our job is to find out whether the attached earlobe is dominant or recessive and whether it's autosomal or sex-linked. By the way, autosomal traits are traits that aren't located on the sex chromosomes, so there are any traits that aren't sex-linked. So there aren't any genotypes shown here, just colored in blank shapes. How are we going to solve this? Well, we can see in this section that the parents don't have an attached earlobe, but one of their children does. Let's think about it. If the parents were hybrids, we'll say that they have one dominant earlobe allele and one recessive earlobe allele each. When we solve the Punnett square, we get this. Three of the children have the dominant phenotype like the parents, and one child has the recessive phenotype. Now we know that having an attached earlobe is recessive because this genotype is the only one with a phenotype other than the parents. So that phenotype must be this child. And we know that the child has attached earlobes because his box is colored in. Therefore, attached earlobes are a recessive trait because the child has a recessive genotype. Now let's try to figure out if this trait is sex-linked or autosomal. In this section of the pedigree, we see that the parents are not affected, but one of their children is. So let's just assume that this trait is sex-linked. If that were the case, then the father wouldn't have an affected X chromosome. So his genotype would be XY. Now the mother could either have no affected X chromosomes or one affected X chromosome, since we know it's a recessive trait and even if she has one affected X chromosome, she won't express the trait because it's recessive. Now let's take a look at the Punnett squares for this cross. In this Punnett square with the mother having one affected X chromosome, we see that one of the daughters is a carrier and the other isn't. In this other Punnett square with the mother having no affected X chromosomes, both possible daughters have no affected X chromosomes either. Well, neither of these match up with the pedigree that we have originally, because in this pedigree, we have one daughter who does express the trait, meaning she must have two affected X chromosomes since the trait is recessive. Therefore, we know that the trait is not sex-linked, because in these Punnett squares, none of the possible daughters have two affected X chromosomes. And there it is. The trait is autosomal recessive. The key thing to examining pedigrees is to try different combinations like we did with the Punnett squares. Once you can prove if a trait is recessive or not, or sex-linked or not, then you can figure it out from there.